engine, which Maserati hasn't touched since 2013, remains a prodigy, and as a high-revving, naturally aspirated V8, one whose days are numbered. And so I take every opportunity both on and off the closed course to enjoy it. Especially at higher revs, I have goo gobs of power at my disposal, power that amasses in a dramatic crescendo as it approaches its 460 horsepower peak at 7000 revolutions per minute, accompanied by sounds that I can only describe as triumphant. I run the pass in both the automatic transmissions sport and manual modes, experiencing a few moments where the powertrain is caught rather flat-footed. Blame the availability of only six gears, so I find the Gran Turismo's enormous shift paddles particularly useful for max fun. Back on open roads, dealing with a fair amount of traffic, I never push the car that hard again. Yet I enjoy the serene calmness with which the Gran Turismo manages more mundane mobility tasks, take in the view down the long, contoured hood, and wonder aloud if the all fury sports car will look and drive this nicely after 11 years on the market. I won't know for some time, given that it reportedly has been delayed until 2020, but I do know that it will be electrified in some way, so it likely won't have the Gran Turismo's Ferrari bread soul. The good news is that this old relic, or is it a revival car at this point? Dash will likely remain with us at least until then, and you won't hear me complaining one bit about that.